Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to this week's episode of Bob's Live. Uh, it's normally our weekly show, but this winter we are alternating weeks, so you can catch Bob's Live every two weeks, and uh, on the alternate weeks, you can catch our podcast, the Keep Growing Podcast. So this week, of course, it's New Year's, and I thought we would take both a look back at 2022, and we would also look ahead with Garden Trends for 2023. So let's start off the show this week by taking a look back at this previous year. So we covered a lot of stuff here on Bob's Live. And I thought it would be fun to take a look back at it and uh, get an idea of, of what the show is about. So if you're joining Bob's Live for the first time, um, this look back will give you an idea of what we kind of cover during the year. So, of course, we head out to the greenhouse so you can see what's happening out there. But we also cover a lot of gardening projects. And we head out on the road to look at other stuff. And hey, I see people are joining us. Uh, we have Donna from up in the Marietta area and Carol from Belpre. It's great to see you guys. Happy New Year. So let's jump right in to a look back at 2022.
So that's a look at the last year here on Bob's Live. So as you can see, we do quite a bit of stuff here on Bob's Live. Um, it's not just the greenhouse and plants growing, but we also get out in the garden and do some work. And there was a lot of stuff that I just, because of time, I wanted to keep the video short that I didn't put in. Um, and I want to start doing more of what I did this year, where I went out and visited places. So going over to United Plant Savers or going on the Athens uh, garden tour. All of that was really awesome, and I want to start doing more of that throughout throughout the year on Bob's Live. Um, so I've got some stuff planned for this year. Hopefully it pans out. Right now I'm reaching out to people, trying to set up more events like that. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, this week, or well, this previous week on, on our podcast, so that's the other thing that's happening opposite of Bob's Live on Tuesdays, is our podcast. I almost said our new podcast, which, yeah, it sort of is. Um, we revived it. We had a podcast a couple years ago, and trying to line up interviews and different things like that you know in the time of the last couple years for obvious reasons um didn't work out so well <laughs> so um we've relaunched the keep growing podcast and it's going to run through the winter time on opposite weeks of bob's live and that way it takes some of the pressure off of me to produce content uh, that's relevant for gardening, but it's in the middle of winter time. So, you know, start to run out of ideas in the middle of winter. <laughs> and um, so you can catch episodes of Bob's Live on those opposite weeks. And this last week's episode, let me jump over to the webpage here. Um... Oops, there we go. I had to find the right thing. <laughs> um, the, uh, the last episode that we covered was Garden Trends for 2023, which is pretty appropriate. So I thought we would dig into some of the garden trends uh, that I talked about in the episode and maybe branch out from there into a couple other garden trends that I didn't mention but were listed on some of the sources that I used. Um, of course, when it comes to garden trends, I say it in the episode, we have a ton of new gardeners right now. Uh, during the last couple years, when people were stuck at home, they needed something to do, or maybe they were afraid of food shortages. I know, I remember the great toilet paper scare of 2020 and people thought food was going to be next. Um, so growing your own food became a huge thing and our industry, I mean, we had our share of challenges, but we grew a whole new customer base. And um, this year, you have all of these new gardeners that are now starting to feel pretty comfortable gardening. So now's the time to sort of expand on what you learned if you're a new gardener and branch out and try new things. Um, so the main thing that I used for, uh, for this episode of the podcast was Garden Media Group's uh, Garden Trends Report. And I don't have it available because it's like a PDF that you have to download and stuff. Um, but I also pulled from gardendesign.com, uh, their trend list, and then also Plantly. And then I talked about a couple other things here that are in the show notes. Um, 
But I thought I would jump down here and hopefully this doesn't crash on me. It did earlier. <laughs> but um, one of the garden trends that Garden Media Group always does is they list a caller of the year. And the slideshow keeps wanting to go off of it. But the caller of the year this year is Terracotta. So it is a great versatile caller. It's kind of an earth tone. So there's a ton of options there. Uh, another thing is meadow gardens, which I've been growing a meadow garden for the last couple years. So I can guarantee you I'm going to be featuring it this year more. And also cottage gardens, which are kind of a meadow garden is, is sort of more natural looking. If you took a meadow garden and kind of kind of spruced it up a little bit, it would become a cottage garden. And then you also have these Greek inspired um, sort of more formal like your gravel gardens and Greek inspired gardens. Um, that's at the more formal end of the garden trends. And then we have technology like Turtill, which is a tilling robot. And also um, like uh, Grow Connect by Miracle Grow, which is their uh, smart irrigation solution. And I don't want to dig into that too much. <laughs> but let's take a look at some of the, oh, going to pop up there some of the garden trends that gardendesign.com mentioned because i thought they had some really good ideas also um along with meadow gardens and i do this myself i go out and pick the flowers and make my own bouquets um, but yeah growing your own bouquets is a huge trend that's that's kind of up and coming because something like zinnias here you can plant those early in the springtime, and by midsummer, you'll have a beautiful display of zinnias to cut. So zinnias, cosmos, make another great bouquet flower. Um, they're a little bit more fragile, so the blooms don't last as long. Uh, and then you've got sunflowers, and, and all of those already sort of in that meadow vein. And then, of course, they have creating cottage gardens. Um, one of the quintessential plants that I think of when you have cottage gardens is foxglove. Um, they just have that shape that works perfect along like a white picket fence. And, you know, it's just beautiful. So things like foxglove, uh, peonies, is another classic cottage garden flower. And then you mix in all of your annuals like zinnias and cosmos and, and all of those classic plants that are starting to make a comeback. Uh, more height, if you want more height. Um, a plant like hollyhock. Um, that's another classic plant that adds height to the garden, but also beautiful blooms. And also uh, nasturtiums. That's another classic plant that is perfect in a cottage garden or even a meadow garden. Um, I grow nasturtiums because they act as a magnet for aphids. So if you have aphid problems in your vegetable garden, plant some nasturtiums kind of out on the periphery of the garden It'll draw those aphids away from your veggies and they'll eat the nasturtiums instead. So they kind of become a sacrificial plant, but you know, I'd rather the aphids eat those than eat my veggies and then I don't have to apply pesticides. So it's the best of both worlds sort of situation. And then uh, they also talked about Mediterranean style or Greek style gardens. And then, yeah, this is the big one, swapping lawns for meadows. So if you follow uh, Bob's Live, you know, you've seen my meadow garden in the past. Um, 
that's that's the main reason why I did it initially was to cut down on the amount of grass that I was mowing. And with my meadow garden the size that it is now, it shaves about an hour off of the mowing that I have to do with the riding lawnmower. Uh, so that saves, especially now with prices the way they are, that saves gas, but it also saves time. And that's time that I can free up to do something else. And then, of course, you have the ever popular house plants. And I didn't mention house plants in this year's garden trends because I was thinking more outdoors. But yeah, house plants, they surged in popularity a few years ago. And I don't think they're going to go anywhere because people finally realized hey, I can bring the outdoors inside. It makes me feel better. And it cleans up the air in the room. So adding texture with foliage plants, uh, that is another great trend. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, making outdoor spaces cheery and bright. Um, ooh, my nose is itchy. Um, <laughs> that kind of ties right in with the cottage gardens. Uh, natural materials. Yeah, I think people want to go back to using more natural materials outside in their landscape and also creating these bright, cheery places. I think I'm scrolling around too much. Hopefully I'm not making you dizzy. Um, but I think the overall theme, unless you're going for the super kind of refined Mediterranean style or kind of that more elegant look, I think meadow gardens and cottage gardens are the way to go because personally I find that they're really low maintenance. So you get something that's beautiful, but it's kind of a set it and forget it style of gardening. Uh, you know, I do some work to clean up the wildflower area in the fall and Right now I need to go in and remove some brush and burn some stuff. But basically I clear off an area, broadcast seed, and then just forget about it throughout the summer. And I end up with a sea of beautiful blooms. Uh, so it's something, you know, it takes a little bit of work initially, but once it establishes itself, it's just beautiful year after year. And the other benefit is you're attracting wildlife. So yeah, I recommend heading over to um, to the Keep Growing podcast on our website. Um, we'll check out Plantly's Garden Trends. So I think they covered a lot of the same stuff. So vertical planting. Um, yeah, a mix of flowering plants, house plants, and herbs, and edibles. So people were kind of mixing everything. Water-wise plants, that's another huge one. Um, growing stuff that's, that's really resilient and doesn't need a ton of water. And that's where the, the gravel gardens come in, too. Uh, gravel gardens, they can trap rainwater, and uh, if you use a gravel garden in conjunction with a rain garden set up, you know, you can really manage your storm water that way. And yeah, there's kind of this, uh, kind of this uh, uh, push toward sort of more formal gardens in some aspects. And uh, new innovation. So this is another one. I have a hydroponic system at home. Um, right now I have it disassembled and in storage because we're getting ready to have some work done in the room where it normally does its thing. Um, but during the winter time, we grow all of our lettuce and veggies using um, 
using a hydroponic system. And it's something that our industry has done a great job over the last few years of redesigning these hydroponic systems and making them a lot more accessible for the average person. Um, the system I use, you know, they're not a sponsor or anything. Um, we don't really have any sort of business connection with them, but it's a company called Let Us Grow. And I was on their Facebook page the other night and uh, yeah, there was a lady on there that was in her 70s and she said, you know, she loves the system because it's easy to use. She needs some help cleaning it, which you only have to do once every three or four months. But other than that, she's able to grow her own uh, lettuce and leafy greens and herbs and stuff inside her house. Uh, so yeah, hydroponic systems are amazing. And then also they hit up Greek expired or Greek inspired gardens. And, um, yeah, they even mention terracotta planters. So terracotta, that's the color of the year. So, well, those are some uh, gardening trends for 2023. I recommend heading over and checking out the podcast. If, you've, if you're new to podcasts and never listened to them, they are a great way to learn things. Uh, so every day for me to get here to work, I have about a 40-minute commute. And I usually listen to one of three things. Um, I either listen to podcasts or audiobooks or music on Spotify. Uh, but the main thing that I listen to is podcasts. And I listen to, obviously, quite a few gardening podcasts, but I have a whole range of other things that I listen to. Um, so the Keep Growing podcast, it's available on all the major podcast platforms. Um, let me jump. Let's see. We'll go back a page. Um, so up here at the top of the podcast header, uh, we have links to some of the platforms, um, not all of them. Uh, so if you use kind of a, um, kind of the more obscure uh, podcast apps like Stitcher or different ones like that, uh, we're on Stitcher. Uh, but we are on the main ones, which is Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. So that's whether you have an iPhone or an Android, Spotify, which is a music streaming service, but now they host podcasts. Also Amazon Music. And then uh, recently we also got added to iHeartRadio. Um, that's one of those things, like with some of these services like Amazon and iHeartRadio, you actually have to apply and then they review your podcast and listen to it to see whether it meets their, their standards. And if it does, then they add you. So yeah, we're on basically all of the major podcast platforms. Um, well, that is all that I have for this week's episode. Um, let me look here on my phone really quick because uh, somebody, uh, let's see, Carol was asking about Amaryllis. And yeah, I don't have a reply yet. I, while the uh, garden or the uh, 2022 look back video was playing, I was texting our uh, store manager up there to see if we had Amaryllis, but he hasn't got back with me. But I'll try to find that out. And I might just leave a comment on this video. Or I think I might be able to send her a message through Facebook. But Anyhow, if you're still listening, Carol, I'm checking on that for you. And, uh, well, everybody else, until next time, check out the podcast. And, of course, keep growing.